Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall in To Have and Have Not. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We've had many premieres on the Lux Radio Theater. And tonight, on our 12th anniversary, we bring you one of Hollywood's most fascinating couples. Together, for the first time on the air, they are Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, co-starred in Warner Brothers' thrilling screenplay, To Have and Have Not. To Have and Have Not is a story of intrigue and action with Lauren Bacall in the sultry and romantic role that won her instantaneous acclaim. To bring the Bogart family to rehearsals, we had to lure them from their brand new mountain home, where, along with a dog, 14 chickens, and eight ducks, they are still in the process of getting settled. No phone as yet, no tables, and no drapes. But if you should drop in on a friendly visit of inspection, as I did, you'd find Lux Flakes doing their part in washing curtains, bedspreads, blankets, etc., etc., etc. When I commented on this fact, uh, Bogey assured me that on his 54-foot yawl in Newport Harbor, which is the Bogart's home away from home, Lux Flakes are a standard part of the equipment, making this family loyal to Lux Flakes on land and sea. It's curtain time, and here's the first act, of To Have and Have Not, starring Humphrey Bogart as Harry Morgan and Lauren Bacall as Maddie Browning. In 1940, following the fall of France, the rule of the new Vichy government stretched to a group of islands due east and south of the tip of Florida, the French West Indies, among them, the island of Martinique. It's early evening. At a little town on the Martinique coast, a boat has just come into port. All right, Eddie, tie her up. That's what I'm doing, Harry. Tying her up good. Well, Mr. Johnson, want to go out again in the morning? No, I'm fed up with this kind of fishing. Yeah, I can see how you would be. You hook a couple of marlin that any good fisherman would give his life to tie in when you lose them both. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, you're just unlucky. Shut up, Eddie. Uh, about my bill. Sixteen days plus the rod and reel you lost overboard. The fishing tackle's your risk. Not when you lose it the way you did. I paid for the rent of it every day. Now, look, if you hired a car and ran it over a cliff, you'd have to pay for it. Well, that's entirely different. Not if you was in it. <laughs> that's a good one, Harry. Yeah, that, that's a good one, Eddie. Now, look, I'm not trying to... I lost to... that gear through carelessness. It cost me 275 bucks. And then there's 16 days at 35 a day. That's a total of 835 bucks. Well, I'll go to the bank in the morning. I was figuring you'd pay me off tonight. I don't keep cash like that at the hotel. Okay. Well, let's go up and have a drink. Yeah, why not? I right, lock up, Eddie. You mean I can't go with you? That's just what I mean. That drunken old fool. Hey, look, Mr. Johnson, Eddie's my worry, see? Now, don't you worry about Eddie. Well, are you coming or not? Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> Well, monsieur, what luck today? Uh, not so good, Frenchy. Couple of bourbons straight. What are you doing behind the bar, Frenchy? Oh, a small hotel like this, Harry. The proprietor does a little of everything. So, uh, the fish would not bite, eh? Uh, maybe tomorrow you do better, eh? Not me. I'm through. This is my last day. Oh, that's too bad, eh? Yeah. Well, here's to you. I'm going to wash up. Oh, uh, that bill was 800 and... Uh, 835 uh, bucks. 835. Oh, Johnson. Yeah? What time tomorrow morning? Oh, uh, after the bank opens, around 10.30. I'll be waiting. Harry, you are free after today? Uh, no more fishing parties? Why? There are some people who want to hire your boat. No, not a chance. 
He only wanted for one night, Harry. To pay well. Well, I can't afford to get mixed up in politics. I would not speak it if I'm not important. Oh, you better not speak at all. Company's coming. Company? Oh, good evening, mademoiselle. Anybody got a match? Oh, yeah. Here's a match. Thanks. Hey, who's that? She came in on the afternoon plane. Oh. Well, about my boat, I know what your sympathies are, and it's all right for you, but I don't want any part of it. They are coming here tonight, Harry, to talk to you. Well, then, get word to them. They'd be wasting their time. Oh, I am sorry. Yeah, me too. Harry, I've been looking all over for What's you. doing, Frenchy? Those men who wanted to see you. I was unable to reach them. Well, tell them when I get here. It is dangerous for them to come here at all, but to come here for nothing. Oh, you don't even listen. Yeah, well, I'm looking at my client, Mr. Johnson. What's that dame doing with Johnson? Dame? The one who was out of matches. Oh, 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 she's been with Johnson all evening. Her name is Browning, Marie Browning. Oh, she's leaving. Yeah, so am I. How are you? Who? Oh, hello. Going someplace? Just to my room, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind, but mine's much closer. It's right here. Say, mister, what's got into you? Come on, let's have it. Have what? Johnson's wallet. I want that wallet, Slim. I'd rather you wouldn't call me Slim. You see, Steve, I'm a little too skinny to take it kindly. I'll quit the baby talk and hand it over. I didn't know you were a hotel detective. Johnson's my client. He didn't speak so well of you. Well, he's still my client. Here. That's more like it. Johnson owes me money. You know, you ought to pick on somebody to steal from who doesn't owe me money. He dropped his wallet and I picked it up. And you were going to give it back to him? No. No, I wasn't. I don't like him. <clears throat> well, that's a pretty good reason. Besides, I need boat fare to get out of Martinique. That's another good reason. Well, what's in it? <clears throat> Sixty bucks, a plane ticket, and fourteen hundred dollars in traveler's checks. Did you expect more? Well, the bird owed me eight hundred and thirty-five bucks. And he said he'd have to go back to the bank tomorrow and all the time he's got a ticket and a plane leaving at daylight. Then I've done you a favor. That's right. I'm entitled to something. See, what do you think is fair? 50-50? Well, or... company. Oh, please, Harry, I told him what you said, but I insisted on... It is not Gerard's fault, Mr. Morgan. I, I am Jean Beauclair. Come in, boys, and close the door. I told Gerard I wasn't interested. Wait a minute, this girl. I'd better go. No, stick around. It's all right to talk in front of you, isn't it, Slim? Go ahead, I don't mind. We'll give you 2,500 francs. We'd offer you more, but we haven't got it. Sorry, my boat's not available. I thought all Americans were friendly to our side, Monsieur Morgan. Yeah, well, there's a rumor they put fellows on Devil's Island for doing what you're doing. I'm not that friendly hey. to anybody. Hey, hey. Who's that? Relax. In here, Eddie. Hiya, Harry. See, I wanted to talk to you about the... Hey, who are these guys? I saw them hanging around the dock after you left. For one who drinks, you have a good memory. Hey, drinking don't bother my memory. If I did, I wouldn't drink. Forget how good it was. Say, was you ever bit by a dead bee? I have no memory of ever being bitten by any kind of bee. Were you, Eddie? Was I? <laughs> Say, you were all right. You know, you got to be careful of dead bees if you go around barefooted, because if you step on them, they sting you just as bad as if they's alive. I bet I've been bit a hundred times that way. Why don't you bite them back? That's what Harry always says. <laughs> but I ain't got no stinger. Please, must we listen to this? <laughs> All right, Eddie. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, huh? Oh, uh, I guess I forgot, Harry. Yeah, well, then I'll see you down at the dock later on tonight. See, Harry, could you let me have a couple Here. of... Here. Uh, thanks. You're all right, Harry. Well, sir, so long. Now, look, Beauclair, I don't care who runs France or Martinique or who wants to run it. You'll have to get somebody else's boat. You're leaving? Yeah. Make yourselves at home. Good night, gentlemen. Sorry, Beauclair, but I got a client waiting downstairs. Come on, Slim. I want to see Johnson's face when you hand him back his wallet. Well, there he is, still sitting at the same table. Hey, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. You're a fine one, Morgan, running off with my girl. She's got something she wants to give you, Mr. Johnson. Go ahead, Slim. Hand it over. That's my... my wallet. Yeah. Where'd you get this? I stole it. Stole it? And just what are you going to do about now, it? The question is, what are you going to do about it? 
Maybe you'd better look it over. Oh, uh, uh, it's all right, I'm sure. Oh, you better be sure the plane ticket's still there. Goodbye, Mr. Morgan. You're not staying, huh? No, we're not staying. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Uh, Now, look, I I was going to pay you off. Sure, you were going to sign some of those travelers' checks, weren't you? I wouldn't skip out on you. Yeah, well, here's a pen. Start signing. Uh, 835. That's right, 835. Oh, what's that? What's going on there? Police. Look, Steve, those men are just in your room. They're after Pipe down, baby, and duck quick. Harry, he, he's dead. Mr. Johnson is dead. Yeah, that's right, Frenchy. Stray bullet. He couldn't ride any faster than he could duck. How do you feel, Slim? Oh, I'm fine, Steve, just uh, fine. Not a minute and those traveler's checks would have been good. Has it struck you it might be an idea to get out of here? Oh, it is no use. They were after your friends, huh, Beauclair? Yes. You, Gerard, stay where you are. Remember, you know nothing. Hey, they're, they're not regular cops. No, Sûreté Nationale. Gestapo, huh? Yes, yes, quiet now, quiet. What happened to this man on the floor? Uh, a stray bullet, monsieur. His name is Johnson, an American. Unfortunate. Take him away. Your attention, everyone. There is no cause for alarm. Inspector Renard is only interested in those persons who have violated regulations. Monsieur Gérard. Uh, yes? Headquarters for questioning. And you? It's not nice to point, Lieutenant. The name's Morgan. Shut up. You, mademoiselle. Say, Steve, was you ever bit by a dead bee? You will come with us at once. <laughs> No, I told you nothing new. Beauclair and the others escaped. I don't know. Yes, yes, later. Now then, you were saying, Monsieur Morgan, you did not know those men. That's right, Inspector. What was your connection with the dead man, Monsieur Johnson? He chartered my boat. But he was leaving Martinique in the morning, eh? Ah, his wallet here. There is no money in it, only traveler's checks. Yeah, well, there was some money in it. Sixty bucks, I took it. Why? Because he owed me over 800. You will surrender it, please. Now, wait a minute. And your passport. But do not be concerned. If your claim is just, it will be returned. That is all at the moment. Mademoiselle? Yes? Mary Browning, American, age 22. How long have you been in the city? I arrived by plane this afternoon. Residence? Hotel Marquis. Where did you come from? Trinidad. Alone? Yes. Why did you get off here? To buy a new hat. Why? To buy a new hat. Read the label. Maybe you'll believe me then. I never doubted you. It is your tone that is objectionable. I will ask you again. Because I didn't have money enough to go further. Where were you when the shooting occurred? I was in... You don't have to answer that stuff. Shut up, you. Don't answer it. I told you to shut up. Go ahead. Slap me. Monsieur Morgan, we wish merely to get to the bottom of this affair. Well, you never do it by slapping people around. It's bad luck. We shall see. If we need to question you further, you will be at the hotel? Well, you've got my dough and my passport. I'm stuck. By the way, what are your sympathies? Minding my own business. May I suggest... I don't need any advice about continuing to do it either. Let's go, Slim. Oh, how do you feel? I'm breathing fresh air again, but I don't understand all this. What's it about, Steve? Well, you, you see, that character Renard works for Vichy. Uh, you, you know what that is. Yeah, something you put in a drink, isn't it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's close enough. Well, well, the other fellas, the ones they were shooting at in the hotel, they're, they're free French. Most of the people on the island are, but they haven't been able to do much about it. You know, I could use a drink. Well, there's a cafe across the street. Let's... Uh-oh, I forgot. No dough. Those guys cleaned me out, remember? Maybe I can do something about that. Another Mr. Johnson, maybe. Oh, uh, any objections? Well, if you're that thirsty, go ahead. You don't mind? I'll wait out here. If I get tired, I'll be back at the hotel. You're not sore, are you? Oh, why should I be? I won't be long. Come in. You didn't wait for me very long, did you? No. You're sore, aren't you? Why should I be sore? Well, I didn't behave very well, did I? <laughs> yes, you did all right, I see. You got a bottle. There was a naval officer. I asked for a bottle and he gave it to me. Just like that? Yeah, he was feeling good, but you're not. Now, look, I don't give a... I know, I know. You don't give a hoop what I do. But when I do it, you get sore. 
After all, you told me to, you know. I told you. Oh, you said go ahead, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. I guess I did. Would you rather I wouldn't do things like that? Oh, why ask me? I'd like to know. Well, of all the screwy... All right, I won't do it anymore. Now, look, I didn't I say... know you didn't. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, well, as long as you do, sit down. How long have you been away from home? This is about the time for it, isn't it? The story of my life. Well, I got a pretty fair idea already. Who told you? You did? That slap you took from Reynard, you hardly blinked an eye. It takes practice to be able to do that. The next time I get slapped, I'll be sure to do something about it. Hey, you forgot your bottle. I don't want it. Who's sore now? I am. Who is it? It's me. The door's unlocked. Here's your bottle. I said I didn't want it. Well, you are sore, aren't you? I asked you a question, you didn't answer me. I said you're sore, aren't you? Look, I'm tired. I'd like to get some sleep. What's made you so mad? I've been mad ever since I met you. Well, most people are. One look and you made up your mind just what you wanted to think about me. Well, go ahead. Keep going. You don't know me at all, Steve. It doesn't work, Steve. I brought that bottle up here to make you feel cheap. And that didn't work either. Instead, I'm the one who feels cheap, and I... I've never felt that way before. I... I wanted to... Well, I thought that... Get out of here, will you, before I make a complete fool of myself. How long have you been away from home, Slim? None of... Home about six months. Going back? How? Well, what are you going to do here? I don't know. Get a job, maybe. Jobs are hard to get. Hmm. Nice perfume. Remind you of somebody, Steve? No, this is a brand new one to me. Would you go back if you could? I'd walk if it weren't for all that water. Good night, Steve. Good night. And quit worrying. You'll get back all right. Could I see you for a minute? What the... Oh. All right. Open the door. Here's that bottle again. Yeah, that uh, <clears throat> bottle's getting to be quite a problem, isn't it? Well, you want a drink? No. Well, I thought you were so tired. I am. But you gave me something to think about. You said you might be able to help me. That's right. You're going to take that job with those men Frenchie brought up here? Yeah, if I can find what's left of them. But don't get the idea I'd take that job just to help you. I need money, too. Wait a minute. Here, can you use this? Oh, now, that's great. She carries a dough in her shoe. And I thought you said you were broke. Oh, you're awful good, Slim. I'd walk home if it weren't for all that water. Who was the girl, Steve? Who was what girl? The one who left you with such a high opinion of women. You think I lied to you about this money, don't you? Well, there's $32 here. Not enough for boat fare or any other kind of fare. But you can have it if you want it. I'm sorry. I still say you're awful good and I wouldn't... I know. You wouldn't take anything from anyone. You know, Steve, you're not very hard to figure. Only at times. Most of the time, I know exactly what you're going to say. The other times, the other times, you're just a stinker. What'd you kiss me for? I've been wondering whether I'd like it. What's the decision? I don't know yet. Do you know now? Well, that was better. Uh, you're sure you won't change your mind about the money? Uh-huh. The money belongs to me and so do my lips. I don't see any difference. Oh, I do. Okay. You know you don't have to act with me, Steve. You don't have to say anything and you don't have to do anything. Not a thing. Oh, maybe just whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. You just put your lips together and... Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, will return with Act Two of To Have and Have Not in just a moment. Where have you been today, Libby? Sure, and I've been drinking cambric tea with a sweet and gracious little lady. Oh, someone with an Irish brogue. <laughs> a temporary brogue. Margaret O'Brien had to learn it for her part in Metro Mayor's Three Wise Fools. 
so she loves to practice it. Margaret never lacks for admirers. Oh, everyone she works with adores her. It's no wonder she's so convincing in Three Wise Fools when she wraps the three old bachelors around her finger. Lionel Barrymore, Lewis Stone, and Edward Arnold enjoyed it thoroughly. Margaret takes a keen interest in the other actors, doesn't she? Oh, yes. I don't know whether she was more intrigued by a troupe of midgets who masquerade as fairies or by lovely Sid Charisse, the famous ballerina. Margaret dances in her next picture, so Sid taught her some ballet steps between scenes in MGM's Three Wise Fools. Sounds like quite a stocking risk for Sid. Oh, no. Her stockings hardly ever get runs. She told Margaret the fairies helped her. The fairies in a box of Lux Flakes? <laughs> you guessed it. Having a box of Lux is just like having a troop of fairy godmothers to help you. That's right. Lux helps stockings last twice as long, so you get the wear of an extra pair from everyone you buy. That's just like having a fairy godmother present you with an extra pair. You're sure that's no fairy tale? Quite. We've scientific tests to back it up. Dozens of stockings were washed with Lux Flakes, the same number with a strong soap. Then strain tests were made to see how soon they'd go into runs. The Lux stockings lasted twice as long. Rayon, nylon, silk, and cotton all showed similar results. That's like finding extra stockings in every box of Lux. Remember, those Lux Flakes are precious. Don't waste them. Here's your producer, William Keeley. Act two of To Have and Have Not, starring Humphrey Bogart as Harry Morgan and Lauren Bacall as Marie. Since escaping the Vigi police, Jean Beauclair of the French underground has been hiding out on the outskirts of town, a bullet wound in his leg. It's early morning now, and Beauclair has two visitors, Gerard, the hotel proprietor, and Harry Morgan. Last night, Mr. Morgan, you definitely refused to have anything to do with us. Why have you changed your mind? I need the money. Last night I didn't. What's the job? You will talk, take your boat to Angela, about three kilometers from the point. The cove and little jetty. Uh, you know it then? Yeah. You will go at night. When you're off the jetty, flash a light. It will be answered. There will be two people to take aboard. I know the name of only one, Paul de Brissac. How about landing him back here? Oh, not here. Uh, you know Cape uh, St. Pierre, Harry? Uh-huh. I will have a rowboat and we'll meet you there offshore. Okay, I'll leave around noon. With luck and no patrol boats, I'll be back at St. Pierre a little after midnight. Well, I won't be carrying lights, Frenchy, so keep your eyes open. If it weren't for, the, for this leg of mine, I'm glad you're on our side, Morgan. Oh, I'm not. I'm getting paid. Oh, uh, I'd like my money now. There, that envelope. Thanks. How is the leg? Please, I'd feel better if you were on your way. All right, good luck. You need the luck now. You and de Bersac. Oh, that girl, Morgan. The one you call Slim. Well, she's leaving Martinique on the afternoon plane. We can both forget about her. Good morning, Steve. Have some breakfast? I had mine two hours ago. What have you been doing? Arranging so you could get on the afternoon plane. Can you make it? Sure. Frenchy here will see you get the ticket. Uh, gladly, if you wish. You took that job, didn't you? Yeah. I figured this way you wouldn't get your feet wet. You want me to go, Steve? Yes. I want you to go. Okay. Uh, help her get on that plane, will you, Frenchie? Yeah, I will. Well, I've got to get down at the dock. I probably won't see you again. If I ever do get up your way, I'll... Yes, do that. I'll leave my address with Frenchie. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll know how to whistle by then. So long, Mr. Morgan. Well, it was nice while it lasted. Perhaps it is better this way, Miss Browning. A strange man. Very strange. Yeah. Come out of there. Come on out of there before I... Eddie. Put down the gun, Harry. It's just me. Well, now, how'd you get aboard? I thought I told I you to... I down at the dock while you was working on the engines. Oh, if I thought you could swim, I'd dump you overboard. You're an old joker, Harry. You and me's got to stick together when there's trouble. How do you know there's trouble? You can't fool me. Say, where are we going? Eddie, what would you do if somebody took a shot at you? Took a shot at me? With a gun? Who's going to shoot at me? Well, if you're lucky, nobody. Harry... Where are we going? I'll tell you when the time comes. Uh, oh, uh, put on a sweater. It's getting cold. Say, what's going on? What's all the darn guns for? Two rifles and... In case we run into a shark or something. Hey, what do you mean, or something? We're going on a job. Can you shoot one of those things? Anybody knows how to handle a rifle. All you got to do is work the lever and pull the trigger. 
What do I got to work a gun for? <laughs> I just wondered if you could. Sometimes you act so stupid, Harry. Sometimes... Is it going to be that bad? It all depends. That's why you didn't want to carry me. You was afraid I'd get hurt. You was thinking of me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was just wondering whether you're going to hold together or not. Well, I'm a good man, Harry. You know I am. Yeah, well, we're going to pick up a couple of guys, Eddie. Now take this gun and get aft. If there's any trouble, start shooting. Yeah, but don't shoot me. Yeah, but supposing something happens to you, what do I do then? Well, how do I know? You invited yourself on this trip. We'll make an angel in about 30 minutes. <laughs> There they are, Harry. Standing on the jetty. I see them come out of the shadows. Turn off that flashlight. Yes, monsieur. All right, get aboard. There's a strong tide here. We are coming. Who are you, please? The Beauclair sent me. My name's Morgan. It's all right, Helene. Quickly now. now. Wait a minute. Beauclair didn't say anything about a woman. Don't meet me, Captain. This is my wife. How do you do? Now, what do you want to bring up? Well, it's your funeral. All right, Eddie, let's get out of here. What happened to Beauclair, Captain? Well, he ran into a little trouble. Monsieur Morgan, who are you? I own this boat. Beauclair hired me to pick you up. You're on our side? No. I don't understand. Well, I don't understand what kind of a war you guys was fighting. Lugging your wives around with you. You're being paid for this. That's what I said. Then I suggest you stop talking and get us to Martinique. That's just where we're going, sister. We'll hit the cape pretty soon, Harry. You want I should store the rifles? I said you want I should store... Shut up. There you go again. I asked you... Turn the motors off. Huh? Turn them off. See anything? You hear anything? No. Nope. Listen. There's a ship out there. Patrol boat. Take the wheel, Eddie. Why did you shut off your engine? Keep quiet. What is it? It is a patrol boat, ain't it? Hey, give me that gun. You can't fight them guys. Oh, what's the matter, Eddie? This is where you ought to be telling me how good you are. If I can do it, but what do you want me to do? What does this mean, Monsieur Morgan? You and your wife get down on the deck and stay there. You'll try to resist them with a rifle? They've got a searchlight. They see get us. Get down on the deck. You save France. I'm going to save my boat. Stand by! Stand by or we'll fire! Harry, get the searchlight. Shoot it out. Well, I can try anyway. You got it, Harry. Hey, you want me to shoot too? Stay on that wheel. Full speed, Eddie. All she's got. Hurry. Oh, they're shooting at us. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Save your breath, mister. They'll run us down. They'll sink us. Yeah, they might. That's a chance we'll have to take. Get down. Duck. Go. Oh, oh, oh. Got him, huh? Yeah. He should have laid down. Well, he's down now. Do something. Please do something. I am, lady. I'm getting us out of here. <laughs> Coming in on the Cape, Harry. Yeah, yeah, take over for a while and watch for Frenchy's boat. Well, how's your husband? Please, help me get him on the seat. Now, we'll leave him where he is. It's just his arm. Besides, I don't want him bleeding all over my cushion. How can you be so heartless? That's something I ask myself at least once a day. Now, we'll be picking up Gerard any minute. He'll take care of both of you. Where will he take us? I don't know. There he is, Harry. Okay, slow down and watch the drift. Can't I get a drink now? Just one. Sorry, Eddie. I need one worse than you do. Yeah? Hello, Steve. Ah. That all you got to say? What's the idea, Slim? What happened to that plane? I missed it. Why? Didn't you like the accommodations? Or I didn't just you... decided to stay. Oh, now, look, well, I've, been how... to... I've been to a lot of trouble to get you out of here and... That's why I didn't go. Not so, are you? Well, it'd be all right if I had any dough, well, but... I got a refund on the ticket. Here. Oh, that's going to help a lot. I'll be all right, Steve. I've got a job. Frenchy seems to think I can sing. Well, it's his place. Sometimes you make me so mad, I Harry. could... You could what? Harry. Harry, I need your help. The Bursac, he's badly wounded. Well, the bullet hit the gun first and it's practically spent. All you got to do is get somebody to take it out. We don't dare call a doctor. You could... Me? I'm hotter than any doctor right now. Don't you think they recognize my boat? All I got to do is walk out of here. You don't have to go out of here. The Bursac is in the cellar. Oh, why didn't you put him in a goldfish bowl in the lobby? We had to do something. 
They're watching every road out of town. Well, Slim, you see what you got yourself into, sticking around here? I'm ready to leave any time you are. Oh, Harry, please. Not a chance. Uh, uh, Harry, uh, my wife tells me your bill is overdue. 6,356 francs. Oh. We will be glad to dismiss the bill if you will do this for us. You'll, uh, you'll throw her bill in too, Slim's? Yes, hers too. Uh-huh. Okay, you'll find a medical kit inside, Slim. Bring it down to the cellar. Sure. And bring some boiling water, too. Do not to touch my husband. Well, that's all right with me. Oh, Harry, please. She's not yourself. Now, look, lady, uh, they can't get a doctor without giving the whole show away. I won't let you do it. Well, he's not badly hurt. He's unconscious because he's... Oh, come in, Slim. Hello. Miss Browning, this is Madame de Boussac. Who are you? Nobody, just another volunteer. What'll I do with this water, Steve? I dropped these instruments in it. You better get out of here, Mrs. Dubusak. You may not like this. I'll be all right. Well, then hold this can of chloroform. If he comes to while I'm probing, pour some on this cotton and give him a whip. Uh, don't open it until I tell you to. His arm. Look at it. How can you... Oh, fine. Fine. She's out. Like a light. M -m madame, madame. Oh, now, let her alone, Frenchie. Slim, any chloroform left? Some. Enough, maybe. All right, fan those fumes away or we'll all be out. Hey... Hey, wait a minute. Not towards her. Well, keep your fingers crossed. Let's have that dressing, Frenchie. Uh, here, Harry, here. Bandages? Now, you and Frenchie can do that. Adhesive tape in the box. I'm afraid the patient's going to recover. Well, I better get Nursey up off the floor. She may catch cold. Oh, she's all right. Just fainted. <sighs> I've got her. What are you trying to do? Guess her weight? Well, she's heftier than you think. Maybe you'd better just look after her husband. He's not going to run out on me. Neither is she. Yeah, when you're finished, go upstairs and get some sleep, sleep and thanks for your help. I'd rather stay here. You heard me. Oh, for the lover. Now, what did I do? You know, Harry... Before I told Miss Browning, you are a very strange man. Now I tell you, she is a very strange girl. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. That is what she said. Yeah. Well, how do you feel now? Very stupid. I'm not in the habit of fainting. Huh. Well, your husband's okay. I just put him to sleep again with a pill. I, I'll stay here with him. Tell me, uh, why did you tag along on a trip like this? I wanted to be with him. Well, that's no reason. I was also told to come. They said no man was much good if he left someone behind for the Nazis to find and hold. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes sense. I told them I'd be no good, but I was afraid. Now I've made Paul that way, too. Now he's afraid. Well, he didn't invent it. Invent what? Being afraid. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan, I... Uh, you're not going to faint again, are you? No. I'm, I'm just having a hard time trying to say something. Well, I won't bite you. I, I'm sorry for the way I behaved. You're just sorry you made a fool of yourself. You don't make me angry when you say that. I don't think I'll ever be angry again with anything you say. Oh, another screwy dame. Now, how can you... Hello. I hate to break this up, but I thought you'd want something to eat. Thank you. How's the patient, doctor, or haven't you looked lately? He'll be all right. I hope you have everything you need here, Mrs. Tabersack. The eggs may be a little hard-boiled, Oh, they're but... fine. I like them that way. You're lucky, isn't she? Well, I'm going up and get some sleep. If you need me, tell Gerard. <coughs> I followed you up here, Steve. Do you mind? Oh, suit yourself. Thanks. For what? I'd like a match. Here. Now I need a cigarette. Well, help yourself. Thank you. Uh, Steve, aren't you hungry? Nope. Let me help you take your shoes Look, off. Look, I'll take my own shoes off. All I want to do is get some sleep. Then I'll fix you a nice hot bath. You'll sleep better. Look, Junior, I'm not hungry. I'll take my own shoes off, and I don't want a nice hot bath. You mean there's nothing I can do? Uh-huh. You can get out. You know, Mr. Morgan, you don't make me angry when you say that. I don't think I'll ever be angry again at anything you say. 
How am I doing, Steve? Does it work a second time? Uh, look, you want to do something for me, don't you? Yes. Okay, then, uh, try this. Walk around me. Hmm? No, go ahead, walk around me. I don't get it. You find anything? <laughs> no. No, Steve. There are no strings tied to you. Not yet. What do you mean, not yet? Come here. Mm, I like that. Except, uh, except for the beard. Why don't you shave, Steve, and we'll try it again sometime. Harry, Harry. Yeah, Frenchy? He's here. Inspector Renard. You better come right down. Oh, no, not now, Frenchy. I gotta shave. Harry, he's got your men. He's got Eddie. He's got... Eddie? Yes. He's giving whiskey. He's asking questions. Oh, well, I'll be right down then. Oh, Slim, I've got no strings. Only a rope right around my neck. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. We'll bring you Act Three of To Have and Have Not, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall in a moment. Being discovered by a talent scout doesn't usually mean immediate stardom. Months of training in diction and acting may precede a starlet's introduction to the public. Our guest tonight, lovely Miss Carrie McCord, is training at Fox right now, and it looks as though big things were in store for her. Do you spend much time on the sets, Carrie? Yes, indeed, Mr. Keeley. When I first signed, Fox was just finishing Daryl F. Zanuck's The Razor's Edge, and I watched Gene Tierney every chance I could. Mm, an excellent way to learn technique. Well, I liked her own powers, too. Well, they were both perfect casting for Somerset Maugham's novel. I'd love to be in a picture that called for a stunning wardrobe like Jean's. You're naturally interested in clothes. Oh, yes. I used to be a model, fashion shows especially. Well, Gene Tierney was also a model. Oh, that's encouraging. We're alike in something else, too. What's that? Our clothes get the same kind of care. Lux flakes? Naturally. I found out from the wardrobe mistress that the beautiful blouses and sweaters Jean wears in the razor's edge were washed regularly with Lux. I've used Lux for my own nice things for years. You'll find Lux is the favorite of Hollywood Studios, Carrie, because it takes such good care of colors and nice fabrics. Well, that's been my experience, Mr. Kennedy. Actual tests support that, too. Carefully supervised washing tests were made by a famous laboratory on dozens of different fabrics and colors. In case after case, those washed the Lux way were still lovely, when those washed the wrong way were faded and drab. In fact, the Lux ones stayed color fresh and new looking up to three times as long. With the high cost of clothes these days, keeping them attractive longer is important to any girl. And that's one of the reasons Lux is worth waiting for if you can't get it the first time you try. Just keep asking for it. More is on the way. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. After the play, we'll bring our stars back for their customary curtain call. Here they are in Act Three of To Have and Have Not. Humphrey Bogart as Harry Morgan, Lauren Bacall as Marie. It's a few moments later. In a corner of the hotel bar, Harry Morgan finds Inspector Renard and Sergeant Coy of the Secret Police. Seated between them is Eddie. We are buying your friend a drink, Captain Morgan. We find Mr. Eddie very entertaining when he drinks. You hear that, Harry? He called me Mr. Yeah, what were you boys talking about? Yeah, I was telling him about the big marlin you and me hooked onto last night. Oh, yeah. Uh, that fish was so big, it, me and Harry could hardly budge him. Yeah, that's right. Must have weighed a thousand pounds. Every time he takes a drink, the fish grows larger. <laughs> well, judging from what's, from what's left in this bottle, he must have started with a mackerel. And how did you finally manage to land such a great fish? Oh, didn't Eddie tell you? We didn't land him. We ran into a German submarine. Oh? A German submarine? Well, whatever it was that opened fire on us, I didn't stick around to find out. 
I do not think anybody could give a more logical explanation for refusing to obey the challenge of our patrol boat. Patrol boat? Oh, so that's what it was. Now, Eddie kept saying it was a patrol boat, but I wouldn't believe him. Now we get down to business, eh, Morgan? What about your passengers last night? What passengers? The ones you bought over from Angela. Would $500 refresh your memory? Oh, my memory's pretty good. For instance, I can remember you're the guy who lifted my passport and all my cash. And if your passport, the money will return. Including the 835 Johnson owed me? Why not? Now, where are they? Your passengers. Well, if these people are as important as you seem to think they are, they're going to be pretty hard for me to find. For a man of your resourcefulness? <laughs> not too difficult. Think it over. Let me know, Morgan. Come along, Coyote. Goodbye, Mr. Reddy. See me again when you get thirsty. <laughs> Them guys don't think that I'm wise, do they, Harry? They was trying to get me drunk. They don't know me, do they? Well, hey. what happened? What did they want? The Bersac. I heard you arranging a deal. But now thinks you will turn them in, eh? Well, that's what you want them to think, isn't it? What will happen? Well, uh, Renard hasn't searched this hotel yet, has he? No, not yet. Well, here's your answer. Renard doesn't want just the Bersac and his wife. He wants the whole setup. And what shall we do? Oh, it's not we, it's you. And you can't do anything until the Bissack is strong enough to move. Now, how about some breakfast? Sure, sure. I thought you didn't want any breakfast. Oh, how are you, Slim? I asked you before if you were hungry. Sit down. Hey, you know, Harry, them guys, they were trying to find out something. What do you suppose it is? <laughs> well, you don't know? No, I ain't got no idea. <laughs> well, that's a good way to leave it. Say, uh... You got the hiccups. Have I, Harry? <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you think you'd better take a drink of water? <laughs> water? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Don't you worry none about me, Harry. <laughs> yeah, well, you stay away from the police. You know, they're not going to believe that story you told them a second time. What story was that, Harry? I forgot. Well, just, uh, just beat it and keep out of sight. Sure, Harry, sure. Well, I'm starting work tonight, Steve. You're a singer now, huh? I'd be interested to know what you think. Uh, will you be there? I don't know, maybe. So you decided to drop in, huh? Yeah. I do my song in a few minutes. Like my dress. Well, you won't have to sing much in that outfit. You know, Steve, sometimes you make me so That's mad. That's why I do it. You haven't seen Eddie, have you? Not since noon. Why? Well, he left the boat and he hasn't come back. Anything wrong? Plenty. They don't look now, but the guy with the door have been following me. Keep an eye on him, will you? I'll be down the cellar. Give Mrs. de Bursac my love. I'd give her my own if she had that dress on. How's your patient? That's what I'm going to find out. Better, Harry, you see? There has been no bleeding all afternoon. I am very grateful, monsieur, believe me. Uh, well, you won't need me anymore, de Bissac. Uh, Frenchy, I'm pulling out. Uh, when? As soon as I can find Eddie. Missing? Yeah. You wouldn't go without him? No, I don't think Eddie liked that. Now, look, Frenchy. As soon as I'm gone, Renard's going to turn this place upside down. You better start figuring how and where you're going to move our patient here. It would be best if my wife and I went with you. Well, I'm still trying to get out of the jam I got into bringing you here. Just why'd you come in the first place? Did you ever hear of Pierre Villemar? Villemar? Yeah. Hey, he was quite a guy. The Vichy got him, didn't he? Didn't they? He's dead, isn't he? No, monsieur, he's not dead. He's on Devil's Island. They sent me here to get him. He's a man whom an oppressed people will believe in and follow. And just how are you going to get him off Devil's Island? You don't think much of me, do you, Monsieur Morgan? You are right. I am not a brave man. Well, I'd still like to know how you're going to spring Vilmar. We will find a way. If it fails, if I die, someone else will try again. There always will be someone else. Yeah. Originally, we planned to do everything from here, but now, because of my clumsiness, it is impossible. That's the reason we have to go with you. But they've got the docks covered. They're all over the place. How will you go? Well, they're watching me to find you. As long as I haven't got you along, I can get on my boat. There'll be a fog tonight. I can drift out beyond the breakwater before I start my engines. I'll have trouble enough without you. Harry, if only you... No, Morgan is right, Gerard. This is not his fight yet. Oh, Gerard told me of your refusing Renard's offer. 
How do you know I won't take it? There are many things a man will do, monsieur. But betrayal for a price is not in your makeup. Well, good luck. I hope you find your friend. Thanks. Well, I'll be around, Frenchy. There are a few things I want to talk to you about before I blow. Hey, I'll be up presently. <laughs> Any sign of Eddie? No. Your friend's still at the door. Yeah, so I see. I've got a hunch the whole thing's going to blow up, and soon. Any plans to? A few. We're going to pull out of here tonight. We? Yeah. As soon as I can find Eddie, and don't look so happy about it. It'll be rough. I'm broke. If we do get out, it'll be with a couple of hundred gallons of gas and a few francs, just enough to get us to Port-au-Prince, maybe. I've never been there. I don't know when you'll get back home. Could be a long time. Could be forever. Or is that what you're afraid of? I'm hard to get, Steve. All you have to do is ask me. How long will it take you to... Oh, now, wait to break it up with being watched. I'd better give on with another song anyway. I'll see you later on. Yeah, later on. <laughs> Harry. Harry. She wants to see you. Madame de Bursac. Now, look, Frenchy, that's all over. I just took her to your room. Your what? Please, Harry. She has to talk to you. Okay. Tell Slim I'm... And I'll come to think of it, don't tell her anything. You shouldn't have come up here. It's too much of a chance. I had to see you. It's about this jewelry. I'd like you to take these. They're all Paul and I have left. Save them until we can come for them. What if they get me before I get out? And throw them overboard. At least they won't have them. Well, suppose I never see you again. Then let it be a part payment for all you've done for us. Miss Browning. I keep barging in, don't I? Renard just came in, Steve. He's on his way up. Did he see you? I don't think so. All right, get in the other room. Both of you go on. Hurry. But suppose he... And keep quiet. As soon as I get rid of Renard, take her back down to the cellar. Okay, Steve. Are you looking for me, Renard? Do you mind if we come in? No, not at all. And any friends of yours... Shut are... up. Search him. Keep your hands up, Morgan. Okay, relax. I don't carry guns. Now, what's on your mind, Renard? The whereabouts of Monsieur and Madame de Bursac. Well, how would I know? Well, I thought perhaps you... Hmm. Perfume. Very nice. You like it, huh? Yes. So do I. All right, Slim. Come on out. Good evening. Mademoiselle. Well, now we are all here, except your friend, Mr. Eddie. You've got Eddie? Yes, we've got Eddie. What are you going to do with him? Oh, if you will not give us the information we want, perhaps he will. We made a mistake this morning of giving him liquor. This time we will withhold it. Oh, he couldn't stand that. He'd crack wide open. All of which you could prevent. Yeah. Yeah, I could. Um, you got a cigarette, Slim? Here. Thanks. Can't you make Eddie talk, Renard? When necessary. Uh, got a match, Slim? Sorry, I... Uh, there's some over in that drawer. You could save your friend a great deal of, uh, shall we say, discomfort? I don't see any matches, Steve. Well, there's a whole box of them. Uh, never mind, I'll, I'll get them. Uh, how much money did you offer me, Renard? Eight thirty-five and five hundred, wasn't it? Except now I don't believe I will pay anything. Yeah. Hey, you're probably right. Eddie will talk. He'll have to talk. There's nothing else I can do but... But what? But this. Look out, he's got the gun! Oh. Oh. Sorry, Renard. Coyo shouldn't have shot first. When somebody shoots at you, you got to shoot back. All right, Slim. Yes, Steve. You know, I'd, I'd forgotten all about the gun in the drawer. Thanks. Listen to me, Morgan. I've listened to you long enough. Now get him up. You forget we still have that drawer. So you were going to drive Eddie nuts, picking on a poor old rummy that never slapping girls around. That's right. Go for your gun, Renard. Your boy on the floor needs company. No, Harry, don't, don't. Get the gun, Frenchy. Uh, uh, yes, Harry, yes. Now, get over that couch, Renard, both of you. <laughs> don't bother me, Frenchy. I'm getting mad. All right, Madame de Bissac, come on out. Uh, let me introduce you, fellas. This is Madame de Bissac. The other one's down the cellar, her husband. Take her down, Frenchy. Get some help. Are them both ready to leave on the boat? Then come back here. Slim, you pack. We're shoving off as soon as we get Eddie out. And just how do you think you will get him Shut out? Shut up. There's a telephone in the hall, Renard. 
You're going to tell someone to let Eddie out? Oh, yes, you are, one of you. Because you're both going to take a beating until someone gets on that phone. That means one of you is going to take a beating for nothing. I don't care which one it is. But I'd like to start with you, Renard. <coughs> where... Where is the phone? I'll... Sh I'll show it here just as soon as you tie up your partner here. Hey. Yes, you hear me? I said you will release him immediately. Tell him he'll explain later. I will explain it later. Do nothing till you hear from me. Then I'll take the responsibility. Goodbye. Thanks, Renard. Now back to my room. You've got some harbor passes to fill out. Everything is ready, Harry. The Bursac and Madame, they're waiting. Yeah, we'll take them down to the wharf. Here, these passes will get them through the guards. Where will you take them, Harry? Oh, well, maybe Devil's Island. Huh? What? Well, it was just a short stop to pick up your friend Vilma. He's still there, isn't he? Oh, Harry, do not joke. Well, that's what you wanted, wasn't it? Oh, Harry, you see, tell more he que fait that pour moi. Well, that's all right. Just, just don't kiss me. Oh, now, Harry. Uh, uh, why, why are you doing this, Harry? I don't know. Maybe because I like you and maybe because I don't like them. Oh, um, you'll have to take care of those guys, Renard and his pal. They're in my room. We will give you plenty of time. If you let them go, they'll come back here and burn this place down. It will be a very small fire. When Vilmar comes back, we will start a bigger fire. Okay. I'll see you at the boat, Frenchy. Hey, Harry. It's me. It's Eddie. Say, how's everything been going, Harry? Well, everything is all right now. You look glad to see me. You know, a funny thing. Yeah, uh, I know. At the police station. I've been at the police station. Yeah, we're shoving off, Eddie. Ready, Slim? All ready. They're down in your cabin. Hey, what is this? She going with us? Yeah, it looks like it. She and those people we picked up. But, Harry, you mean... Oh, what's she got to... Who are you? Was you ever bit by a dead bee? Uh, was you? Yeah. You know, you got to be careful of dead bees. They can sting you just as bad as live ones. Especially if they was kind of mad when they got killed. I feel like I was talking to myself. I bet I've been bit a hundred times that way. Why don't you bite them back? I would, only I haven't got a stinger. Now I remember you. You're all right. She can come, Harry. It's okay with me. Uh, thanks. <laughs> now, I'll have the two of you to take care of, won't I? Yeah, that's right, Eddie. Throw off that line. Sure, Harry. All clear. Well, here we go, Slim. Yes, here we go. You don't have to act with me. That's what you said, remember? You don't have to say anything, and you don't have to do anything. Oh, maybe just whistle. Hey, well, I've been practicing. Oh. Listen. You feeling happy, Slim? What do you think? Our stars will return for their curtain calls in a moment. Grandmother is sitting quietly in the living room. That is, until young Jane bursts in. Mother! Your mother's out, Jane. What is it? Oh, oh, hello, Grandma. Look what I just bought. A ducky new slip. Do you mean to say your mother allows you to wear things like that? Well, why not? What's the matter with it? Silk and lace. Why, in my day... But it we... isn't silk, Grandma. It's rayon. And I've looked all over town for a blue like this. We wore sensible clothes when I was young. Oh, but, Grandma, pretty undies make you feel so wonderful. Hmm. Sheer extravagance. <laughs> Not really, Grandma. I've got lots like this, and they wear and wear. You see, I use Lux. You take care of your own things. Well, I should say so. On my clothes allowance, I can't afford to have them wear out fast. With Lux Care, they look simply swell. Sensible Jane. Lux Care really does keep pretty undies lovely longer. Up to three times as long, in fact, color tests show. I've seen identical slips. One washed the wrong way with the wrong kind of soap, and one washed the right way, the Lux way. And you'd be amazed at the difference after 30 washings. One was faded and drab. The Luxed ones were, were still lovely looking. So, if you value your pretty things, Lux them after every wearing. If you don't find Lux Flakes at your dealer's, try again soon. More is on the way to him. Lux Flakes are worth waiting for. We return you now to William Keeley. 
Back for a well-deserved curtain call come the stars of To Have and Have Not, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. <laughs> Lauren, all our heartiest congratulations on your first appearance on the air. I'm sure there'll be many more. Thank you, Bill. Hey, see, that wasn't so bad now, was it? What if you do make a slip on the air? There's only 30 million people out there ready to jump down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lauren... Oh, just a minute, Bill. The name she answers to is Betty. You only call her Lauren when you're sore at her. <laughs> I see. Okay, Bogey. As I said earlier, Betty, we've had many premieres in this theater. But tonight, I'd like to bring our audience a world premiere, something never before heard on the air. But I'm not sure Bogey would approve. But think, Bogey, 30 million people waiting breathlessly to hear it. Yeah, but think of me, my nerves. Every time I hear it, I jump. Yeah, but in spite of personal sacrifice, the audience must come first. Now, how about it, Betty? Oh, oh shall I, Bogey? Okay, honey. Thank you, Bogey. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the air, you're about to hear <laughs> an instrument made famous by tonight's play. Immortalized by the line, Whenever you want me, whistle. It's Betty Bacall blowing the special whistle which he carries for that special purpose. Ready, Betty? Ready, Bill. Blow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bogey, I, I can see how you'd find that whistle irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, Betty, I, I notice you don't use it in your current Warner Brothers picture, The Big Sleep. No, she doesn't need to. She has me hooked right from the beginning of that picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, both of you do a splendid job in bringing Raymond Chandler's mystery to the screen. Thanks, Bill. What do you have coming up on Lux next week? Uh, next Monday night, we bring our audience a household full of humor, drama, and romance. It's Paramount's recent screen success, Miss Susie Slagle's. Starring Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf. One of the newest and brightest stars of Hollywood, Miss Caulfield plays her original screen role, as does Billy DeWolf, in this poignant story of a group of students in pursuit of fame and happiness and love. Oh, that ought to make a great hit with your audience, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and many thanks to both of you. Our sponsor, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater brings you William Holden, Joan Caulfield, and Billy DeWolf in Miss Susie Slagles. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Suppose you had to do without a month's supply of soap. That could happen if used fats aren't turned in by the housewives of America. Scores of major industries need oils and grease, yet there's a shortage of oils all over the world. So if they're going to keep going, they must boost their supplies with used fats or cut into the supply of fine soap-making oils. And that would mean less soap for you. So don't throw a single drop of used fat down the drain. Your dealer will give you four cents for every pound. Heard in our cast tonight were Tim Graham as Eddie, George Sorrell as Gerard, and Jack Crucian as Inspector Renard. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Miss Susie Slagles with Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.